Hey guys, how you doing? Zach Evanish here. I want to say this yeah. because I, I want to let it unfold. I tell you what changed my life was actually my senior year. One of the kids on my team, he gave me Dan Gable, not gave me, he gave, he exchanged Dan Gable's competitor Supreme VHS tape to me. And I gave him the Ohio State wrestling one. And so every day, I didn't even have a VHS player at my house. I would go to my friend's house up the street. And I'd be like, can I watch, you know, my tape in your house? I'd be like, yes, you can watch your wrestling tape. It was like 90 days in a row of me watching Dan Gable competitor Supreme. And, you know, Brands and Gable and everybody in that tape was saying, you got to outwork the competition. And of course, that may have kind of worked against me with some injuries because of how crazy I went. But with work ethic, I learned so much from that tape and from my wrestling coaches that I just, you know, every day I have to get something done. So I filmed some videos while I trained. This morning I got other videos done. I got an email out. Every day, you know, I'm doing something to get better. And the Ultimate Warrior said, it's easy to be a badass under the barbell, but how about you be a badass in your life? And I gotta tell you, life could be really tough sometimes. It could kick your ass and you think you're, you know, the fight is over and then the, the fight begins again. And one thing I like to really do during the Strong Life podcast is share transparently, really just share, not just the good times, but the legitimate tough times and the bad times how to manage stress or stressful situations. Because for me, going through a completely different transition, I left teaching uh, in the schools nine years ago, and I went back to teaching this year, and it has been awesome. But the big stressor for me was a simple change. I'm a very, you know, that song, simple kind of man is very much what I love to live by, just basically, you know, uh, a little bit of time with friends, a lot of time with family, and then things that I'm doing with my gym. That's what makes me happy. So where I teach now is a good commute, usually an hour, give or take 15 minutes if uh, there's traffic. And um, just started getting stressed out about not getting certain things done. And then literally after like two or three days, I said to myself, first of all, Stressing out doesn't help anything. There's no power in stressing out. Instead, let's take control. So I was already waking up at, at 5 a.m. I leave the house at 7.15. I said, you know what? Let's just maximize that first hour and a half of your day. Because once I'm working for an hour and a half, I still make the kids their uh, breakfast. I pack lunch usually the night before. So I get some other things done in the morning. And then I just started leveraging my time. So I said, okay, anytime I'm feeling it, when I'm driving, we're gonna put up a Instagram Live or a Facebook Live. But the bottom line is I decided not to be or act in a way where I am powerless. I decided to make everything work for me, not against me. And a big mistake when I connect with coaches and just people in general is they express themselves and act in a way where they are helpless and hopeless. When really I just think about, okay, there's food on the table, there's a roof over my head, and I'm holding an iPhone. Life is certainly not bad. And I'm doing basically, I do what I have to do. So we just launched the Strong Life Experience recordings. Yesterday was a pretty long day. After work, I went and ran the gym for two hours. Then I went and picked up my son from his baseball. Then I took the dog out. And then by the time I sat down to get some work done um, from other than the morning, I believe it was close to 10 o'clock. But all it took was getting 30 minutes of focused work done. So think about something in your life that you're complaining about yet not doing something about it there is no power in speaking negatively on something and especially no power in speaking negatively 
against other people. It's really just a waste, right? Don't be the crab pulling the other crabs down in the bucket. Instead, you need that mindset where you just don't fear what you have in your life. You don't fear getting uncomfortable. And that, that comfort with being uncomfortable in life is what allows you to thrive during tough times. And tough times are always coming around the corner. And those of you who are entrepreneurs or run your own business, I mean, I'm not a economics guy, but I do recall the uh, when we went through an economic downturn right after Hurricane Sandy, it especially impacted the New Jersey area. It impacted my business big time. And then I remember sometime around 2008 when the economy had a downturn and I had just opened my gym in my second year other than the years in my garage. And I remember having a much more powerful mindset. And the reason why is I'm looking at my bookshelf and I've got all these newsletters that I was part of, sometimes up to $500 per month in the newsletters that were coming to my house. And the first thing I always read was the back section of these newsletters that was called Millionaire Mindset. And to me, the most inspiring thing was how those stories of these multimillionaires it had nothing to do with their money. It had to do with their mental strength. It had to do with their fortitude. And I just felt like they were tough people applying their lessons of grit and toughness to their business. It was essentially who's going to work smarter versus just work hard and who's going to be tough while other people, while the majority of people quit. So that's what you got to do. You got to look at areas in your life where you're starting to kind of cave in and give up and poor me, my life is so bad. That's, that's weak. It's not going to help you. Instead, look at the situation, look at the obstacle turn it into an opportunity. That's what the strong life experience and the strong life is all about. Obstacles are opportunities. Tragedies become triumphs. Your struggle becomes your strength. And that little bit of stress I had, I'm not going to say it disappeared, but I began to thrive and I began to get fired up. And I was like, all right, man, this is, on. it is on. I'm going to crush this. And my productivity has really skyrocketed when I have such minimal time to get work done. But now the work I'm doing is very dialed in and strategic. It's only the things I need to work on and I'm not allowing outside circumstance to interrupt, interfere or disrupt with what I'm doing. And that's how you've got to think. I just got something to say, something I wanted to share and Sometimes I have stuff on my mind and I'm not uh, able to record or I say to myself, well, I'll just do that tomorrow morning. I want to tell you not to give up. And I've been through many ups and downs in my life, whether it's business, whether it's friends, whether it's relationships, whether it's injuries from training, whether it's athletics. I mean, lots of ups and downs. And there were times where I just kind of, let those things beat me up. They beat me down. That's what they did. I let them beat me down. What happens is you build momentum in this negative manner. You just start getting weaker. And I'm here to tell you, man, that everything will pass. Bad times pass. Tough times pass. And uh, like my friend and business coach Craig Ballantyne says, action beats anxiety. So if you're feeling stressed, if you're feeling run down and beat up, you got to give, you got to produce, you got to create, you have to give and pay it forward. And that's one of the oldest lessons I learned from Alan Cosgrove, who mentored me almost 20 years ago. So if you're feeling like that time is happening or you're in that time now, then just Go and share something with somebody. Go and do something for somebody else. Take the focus off yourself and give. I had a buddy of mine reach out to me a week ago or so, and he was pretty down, and he you know, was basically giving up on stuff and talking about being depressed. And I said, yo, man, 
couple things you got to do. Number one, you got to train. Do something. Get yourself going. If it's not strength training, then go ahead and go running, go hiking, go mountain biking, go skateboarding. Get back to that thing or those things you used to do when you were a kid. Okay? Get back to having fun. Number two, do something for somebody else, man. Take care of somebody else. Like, help people out. It feels just damn good to be helping people. It really does. And I've often said, like, I, I really want to get to the point where, you know, the underground strength gym goes back to the garage and it's free of money, right? It's not, you don't, you can't pay me to get into it. You know, money can't buy your way into things. It's going to have to be from your effort, your dedication. I'll help you if you're willing to help yourself. And the best way for me to get there is to take action, is to give to others, is to keep sharing. You know, listen guys, sometimes I'm like, damn, who is this video helping? Who is this podcast helping? Then somebody sends me an email where they spoke about wanting to commit suicide until they started watching my videos, listening to the Strong Life podcast, listening to the Strong Life Insider. It gave them strength, it gave them hope, and I'm like, damn, I have to keep doing this. I may not always want to get connected to social, but you know what? It's saving people's lives. It, it sounds crazy, but it is what it is, guys. So, don't give up. You're stronger than what you think. Tough times make you feel like you can't do this or you, you know, you're incapable. But, you know, the people that are crushing it, it's not like they're much smarter than you or I. You know, they're just consistently taking forward action. They build that positive momentum. And, of course, they're building relationships. They're communicating with people. They're just putting themselves out there. And that's what I want you to do. Put yourself out there. Don't give up. Keep kicking ass. If you move forward one inch today, in 12 days, that's 12 inches further. You know, every inch is 100% more than zero inches. As that Al Pacino speech goes in any given Sunday, the inches are all around us. What are you most proud of? Oh, that's a tough one because I'm super hard on myself. You know, I never feel like I am. I'm proud of this, you know, and I, I struggle with that. Um, I don't know. I don't feel like I'm not like I'm so proud of the underground strength gym. People will be like, look at this thing. It's known around the world. I'm like, eh, it ain't good enough. And so I struggle with taking pride in in. I'm so proud of this. I really don't have, some people might say, wow, that's kind of sad. That's just the way I am. I'm very tough on myself and I want better. I'd say, you know, one thing I'm proud of is like, I've had a lot of ups and downs with business, with business relationships, with life, just like anybody else. Um, things that should have and really could have stopped my business, stopped a lot of things. And um, I just feel like I'm unstoppable. Like you gotta kill me to, to you know, stop me from this. Like my gyms have gone through the recession, through this COVID, through a hurricane where, you know, it destroyed the town. It's like, I feel, I take a lot of pride in not quitting and that- Showing up. Showing up, when the chips are down, yeah. being very resilient. I, I take a lot of pride in that. Maybe is that different than being proud of it? No, that's good, same. Yeah, so I, I take a lot of pride in that. Uh, and the, I like yeah. the question you asked me before about why I'm not better. Um, and I'd say, you know, the op I, I missed some opportunities and then environment. Some of these things we just can't, we can't control. Um, and then I'd also say like sometimes an opportunity is presented to you and I've turned down opportunities that yeah. could have me better, but maybe weren't better for the time, family, the time, the business. And so there's a lot of, you know, what ifs in there, right? Nothing good in my life happened through comfort. That doesn't mean sometimes, sometimes comfort is a good thing. You need it. 
You need that yeah. downtime. You need to give the brain and body a recharge. It makes you creative. You come back stronger. But as I'm older, I'm like really having to push myself to get stronger. And um, <clears throat> I want to talk to you guys about just something that I've always known, but really been putting into practice a lot more lately. And that is the old cliche of time goes way too fast. And, um, you know, I'm finishing up that book, Spartan Up by Joe DeSena. And um, he was talking about his time on Necker Island with Sir Richard Branson, who runs something like 400 companies and is a multi, multi-billionaire. And, uh, but the guy still finds time to go out and play. He's, you know, out uh, parasailing, he's out on his boat, he's out on his catamaran, he's always doing stuff. And uh, <clears throat> he's always finding time to play. And yesterday, you know, I pick up my son every day from school at 12.30, and it was a beautiful day out. And uh, of course it's, you know, the spring has just begun here in New Jersey. And he wanted to go outside. And I used to always catch myself saying, Daddy has to finish this, Daddy has to do that. And then I was like, you know what, fuck this. And I've been saying fuck this a lot more lately, where I just take my kids out and uh, whatever. If I got to get back to work later on at night or wake up earlier, that's what I do. But time goes too fast, so now I really, uh, less time getting caught up in the work, work stuff. Another thing that hit me was I listened to an interview with Lewis Howes on um, his uh, podcast, The School of Greatness. And uh, one of the guys that used to be an assistant for Tim Ferriss was talking about essentially how he freaked out <laughs> working too much. So now he goes out and plays a lot more. And that's really the ticket. Getting out, playing, and not, you know, whatever. If we don't get it done today, we'll get it done tomorrow. And uh, I'm still getting a lot of work done but uh, I'm just a lot more chill about it, and I think that's something for everybody to keep in mind. So uh, time does go too fast. The kids do grow up too fast. You probably do work too much if you're an entrepreneur. Um, there's certainly a lot of people out there that are lazy that don't do really the work that they should be doing, but I'm not talking to those people. I'm, you know, If you know what I'm talking about, then uh, we're talking about you. Whew. Play more, say fuck it a little bit more, and uh, time goes fast. So get out there and enjoy it. It's just crazy. Uh, I'm 38 and a half, kids growing up too fast. And uh, even though I'm playing more and using myself, you know, more free time, I'm getting more done. I'm always getting more done. So I'm still time efficient. So that's some food for thought. Uh, have fun, play, say fuck it a little more. And so I always say to adults, you've got to do something deeper than chasing bigger biceps and six-pack abs. And so it may not be, you may not be a mom or a dad, it may not be family, it could be your dog. And that you just want to be stronger and be that person's role model. I saw something kind of on the flip side on Instagram. Um, a dad was uh, shared a photo of his son throwing out the first pitch at a minor league baseball game. And he said, I train because my son is my hero and I want him to see me being strong and capable for him, showing him the work ethic. And so those are the deeper layers of, you know, when we say fitness, fitness is not just the ability to run the mile, the ability to do the push-ups. It's deeper, and you got to peel away the layers and ask yourself, why do I really want to be strong? Well, I want to be able to do X, Y, Z. You keep asking why and why. Think about who's on your phone. Think about how you, who you want to inspire. So be, be somebody's hero. And being strong and fit is really our duty as we become adults. You become a better father, mother, better colleague, better friend, better for everybody. And so I, that story of that, that guy, that dad saying, my son is my hero, that hit home for me. I always thought about my kids on my phone. I want to inspire them, be strong for them. So that's what you guys got to think. You got to dig deep and it will get you out of bed during those mornings where you don't want to get out of bed. Or let's say you, you go to Michael's uh, place after work and you're driving, you're like, I just got to go home. I, I can't go to the gym, I'm exhausted. Think about who you're going to inspire 
by showing up and doing the work and following through and being strong. And that thought, those people that you're thinking about, will carry you through the tough times. Yeah, peace. Take care. Comb your hair, guys. Later.